Welcome to Battles of Faith. We're your host, Ivor and Atante Myers. Today, we're continuing our discussion on the entertainment industry, which we compare to a black hole. A black hole is that place in space where no light can escape. Today, our program is dealing with music, particularly rock music and hip-hop music. We've entitled this program, Killing Us Softly. Listen to this. This is taken from the Far West and Popular Culture Conference, February 1998. The hip-hop culture has permeated popu popular culture in an unprecedented fashion. Because of its enormous crossover appeal, the hip-hop culture is potentially gr a great unifier of diverse populations. Although created by black youth on the street, hip-hop's influence has become worldwide. Approximately 75% of the rap and hip-hop audience is non-black. It has gone from the fringes to the suburbs and into the corporate boardrooms. Indeed, McDonald's, Coca-Cola, Sprite, Nike, and other corporate giants have capitalized on this phenomenon. Now, I don't agree that it's a unifier. However, what's interesting in this article is that approximately 75% of the rap and hip-hop audience is non-black. Because I think that when we think of hip-hop music, we think of black kids on the street mm -hmm. listening to rap music and mm -hmm. break dancing and those kind of things, where hip-hop has gone much further than that. Right. Well, I would actually say that I do believe that hip-hop is a unifier, uh, but just in the wrong in way. In the wrong way, right. And uh, we see that because this music has uh, crossed all cultural barriers. And uh, we had spoken on another program just sharing that you can go almost to any country, uh, even to Iraq and Israel, and you will find that rap music has become a part of the culture there in expressing uh, the, the feelings of uh, the youth uh, in the culture in particular. So yeah, it's gone across all boundaries, and uh, it definitely is unifying people across the world. And some of our viewers may not have watched some of our pr previous programs and don't know about your, your testimony, but you can talk about this because you actually have come out of the hip-hop industry. That's right, and, and that's why uh, we, we have entitled um, m many of these talks that are actually dealing with the entertainment industry in terms of the black hole, uh, what it means to have escaped from the black hole, in particular the hip-hop, um, rock music, and as you said, rock music has, is, is no longer uh, even a, a, it's becoming, it's melding its way into hip hop music. And uh, it's, I mean, the music has, is becoming a phenomenon in that it's, again, crossing all, all, all boundaries. Right. And, you know, it's just so interesting to me. I remember the first time I was driving in my car and I looked over to the right and I saw like a corporate businessman kind of doing the <laughs> hip hop beat thing and I was like wow everyone really is into this and it was just amazing. Right. Well in the context of uh, what we're talking about the black hole killing us softly. You know there was a song that came out uh, some years back uh, called Killing Me Softly and it was about killing about uh, the words in a particular song that were having an effect upon this person's emotions and feelings and we thought it appropriate to uh, entitle this program program killing us softly because we're, we we want to look at what rock music and rap music uh, does to a person's spirit to a person's character we want to see that it actually is indeed killing us in ways that we don't realize that's right we just think we're listening to a to a heavy beat and and some words, but it's actually doing something to us. That's right. Let's take a look in the book of Revelation, and we invite you, as usual, to get your Bibles. We're going to open up to Revelation chapter 18 on the Tante. We've been focusing in on this text because it sheds so much light on the battle that we are up against. We entitled this program, Battles of Faith. We're talking about what it takes to overcome. Uh, in fact, Revelation 12, 11 calls us to overcome and to overcome by the blood of the Lamb. We're going to talk about that in a later program, but uh, we want to focus in right now on, on, this, on the concept of this battle in terms of hip-hop and rock music. Let's notice verse 23 of Revelation chapter 18, and the context here, this is speaking about the fall of Babylon. Now remember that because Babylon uh, is, is a key player in last day events. 
And notice what it says here in verse 23. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. All right, and we see there that uh, according to the scripture, it is uh, Babylon's sorceries that deceive all the nations. Um, we've discussed the word before. Sorcery uh, is the Greek word pharmakia, and we'll put that word up on the screen again. Uh, that word pharmakia means uh, anything that medicates the mind so that it will not follow the will or the law of God. And we hope that you remember that because that, that understanding is so important because what it does is it opens up our understanding to see, wait a minute, uh, sorcery is not just Harry Potter, even though it is, um, but it's not limited to Harry Potter. It's not limited to reading your uh, astro uh, you know, horoscopes or, or different, going to a, a, a palm reader and things like that, but it is in actuality anything that medicates the mind so that it will not follow the will or the law of God. And Atante, when we, when we look at music, in particular rock, hip-hop, and, and other styles of music, a lot of these styles of music actually medicate the mind so that they will not and cannot and don't want to follow the will or the law of God. You know, many people believe that music just doesn't have that power. They believe that, you know, they're just listening to some lyrics and there's a melody and in, in rock and hip-hop there might be a heavy beat behind that and that's all it is. It, just, it, there's, it doesn't go any further than that. Well, we had just said a little bit earlier that this particular concept, this particular text is speaking about Babylon. And if you remember the story of Daniel, I believe it's Daniel chapter 3, where uh, Nebuchadnezzar had set up this golden image, and he invited all the people to come and to worship the image. And you know, music played a very important part in that, uh, in that scenario. Uh, in fact, the command went out that said, when at the time that you hear the sound, and it goes on to list all these kinds of musics and, and instruments, when they heard that sound, they were to bow down to this image. Right. And as in the, in the type, so in the anti-type. In other words, we will see in the last days, the devil will be using music to try to get people to bow down to his image, uh, to his character, to his likeness. And we're seeing that happen before our eyes. Now, you were in the hip-hop industry yourself. I mean, you actually were on the TV programs. You did concerts and, and all of these things. What did it, did it bring out? What did this hip-hop music, I mean, what, was, what surrounded it? Well, I'll tell you, one of the first things that uh, is evident in the hip-hop field, and, and I know this from experience, is, is the, the issue of pride. You know, it, it, pride is a necessary thing in the hip-hop culture. There's no such thing as being humble and being a hip-hop artist. You mean you can't rap on a stage and just be humble? No, it's, <laughs> it's impossible. You've got to have the head going. You've got to, you know, show that, yeah, you know, I can. And y that whole spirit, even the, the body movements represent uh, pride. They, 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 just, they just scream pride. You know, so it's impossible. You can't get on stage and just say, I'm not going to write, but <laughs> just, you know, hold the mic and try to gently, and I'm trying to be meek. It doesn't work, you see? So one of the things that hip-hop calls forth, and rock music, it calls forth pride. And we know that pride is diametrically opposed to the character-building process of a Christian. And, you know, something that I see uh, with the hip-hop music or the, or the rap music, and I said this in, a, in another program, is that, I mean, it has definitely crossed all cultural barriers. Uh, a friend of mine let me know that, you know, most people, or a lot of people who even used to listen to rock music, there's not that many very popular rock bands anymore. It's more hip-hop, and the rock bands actually have joined hands with some of the more famous hip-hop groups to make songs together just to keep their, their name out there. But the point that I was trying to make is that, you know, most of the hip-hop music and the rock music has to be talking about um, sex, drugs, you know, what you're going to do to somebody if they do this to you. It has nothing to do with the, the, even the good things that are in the world. I mean, absolutely nothing. It has to be that hardcore, raunchy um, things that they talk about or it doesn't sell or it's, it's just not popular. That's right. People wonder, does music, can music really affect 
the character. And again, we want to contend that it does affect the character. And if, if we are trying to strive to reflect the character of Jesus Christ, we've got to understand that we've got a battle on our hands. You know, we've got um, an enemy who wants to subvert that whole process, who wants to destroy that process of character building, and he's going to use whatever he can to do so. When we talk about the word character, we're going to put this up on the screen. The word character is defined as this, uh, thoughts and feelings combined. Thoughts and feelings combined make up the moral character. And that's from a book, Heavenly Places, page 164. And that only makes sense. The way we think, the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so, so is, is he. he. So the way that we think and the way that we feel make up our moral character. Now, why is that so interesting? Tante, um, I have an acquaintance who has also escaped from the black hole, and um, his name is Peter Gregory. He was a break dancer just around the same time that uh, my brother and I were involved in the whole hip-hop industry, and the Lord led him out in a mighty way as well. And I heard him give an illustration once where he describes that, um, that uh, he talks about music. And music is made up of two components. You've got words and you've got the music. And basically, words reflect thoughts and music reflects what? Feelings. Feelings or emotions. So you put those two together and you've got to understand that what we listen to can actually shape and affect our characters. And that's true. You look at rock music. Uh, you look at hip-hop music. Those, the spirit behind that music is rebellion. And, and I know that, you know, being around at the, at the introduction of hip-hop music, it was, a, it was a vehicle of rebellion against the status quo. The same thing with rock music when it became popular in the 50s and in the 60s. The, the feelings that this kind of music uh, uh, evoked out of the heart was fe were feelings of rebellion, you see? And so you've got these rebellious feelings, you've got these rebellious words that go together, and what you have is a character-forming issue. And it's not only with rock and hip-hop. I mean, you know, the devil will use any kind of music he can in order to uh, shape our character, you know? You think of some, even some styles of country music. Right. You know, sometimes country music can be known for being very depressing, you know? so. Even in country music, there, there are certain, you know, certain country songs that are good, and then certain ones that was going to get in there and say, you know, just moan and groan and be sad, and, you know, my dog died, and, you know, everything else. You know. So we've sure got to realize... Sure, they talk about more than that. Of but course, <laughs> right. But we've got to realize that, that uh, the enemy will try to come in in any way. Now, I would say that while there is some good country music, there is no good rock music. There is no good hip-hop music. And we're going to... I know some people are probably thinking, well, what about Christian hip-hop? What about... Christian rock, but we're going to hold those, um, we're not going to answer that yet, we're going to do that in our next program, but now we want to talk, we want to focus in on secular rock and secular hip-hop and see the effects that these things are having on the human, ca on, on our characters. Well, one of the things that I, I can see uh, with hip-hop and rock, especially in the young women, is I don't know if it's the beat or if it's just the culture of uh, the music, but the, you know, the more they're into it, the less they have on. Mm -hmm. So it, it, you know, it, it goes along. They're talking about sexual things. They're talking about uh, rebellious things. And their dress goes with that. With the women, they don't have a lot of clothes on when they're, you know, really into the, the hip-hop music. Modesty is, is just nothing. And then for the young men, they're dressing again with the, with the saggy pants and the hats on backwards and the oversized shirt and everything's too big. It, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. That's right. It's a spirit of rebellion. And uh, when you look at Tante, not only at the, at the words, you know, I, I was born in Jamaica, and uh, reggae music is a, is a really big, you know, that's the music of Jamaica. And I remember growing up as a child, not a Christian, just, you know, worldly, worldly person. I remember thinking to myself, you know, this music sounds so sexual. Everything about the reggae music is just, is just sexual, you know? And... Um, and lo and behold, I mean, when you, when you listen to reggae music, it's rhythm, you know, calypso, reggae, those rhythms in a lot of those, in a lot of the island music is very suggestive sexually. And so music carries emotion. Music is that vehicle through which we express our emotions and what we're feeling. 
And this is one of the tests that we need to apply when we're considering what kind of music do I want to listen to. That's right. And I mean, that's Satan's whole ploy. I mean, if, they're, if you have young people or people, period, listening to music that suggests sexual things, planting seeds in their minds, then they're actually going to want to go and actually play those things out. They're not just going to continue to listen to the music, dance in a sexual way, and not actually participate in that act. That's right. You know, 1 Samuel 15 and verse 23, the Bible says there, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And uh, we, we notice that the word witchcraft actually means to whisper a spell. And again, I suggest that through uh, a lot of this music, when, when these people are speaking, you know, some rap song comes out and the guy is speaking in the first person, I do this and I do that and I shoot this guy and I do this and I get all these girls and all these different things. When a person is sitting and listening to this music and they're listening to it in the term of the, in, uh, they're listening to it through the ears of the first person. I believe that the devil himself, through those words which he inspired, is speaking in first person form and, and is hypnotizing Atante. It's saying, I, and you know, you're sitting there, you're listening, and you're going, yep, that's right, I do this, and I want to do that. And this is how that form of hypnotism actually uh, spreads itself. Thousands, millions of kids listen to this, and they're hearing one guy going, I do this, and, I, and they're saying, I want to be like my hero. I want to be like my, and what you have happening is witchcraft. You have people who are being whispered to through the enemy and saying, don't you want to be like this? Don't you want to do like this? Don't you want to act like this? And really what it is is the working of the devil. And people may be thinking out there, I wonder why they're just so focused on hip-hop. But again, hip-hop music is taking over the world, literally. When most of the commercials on TV, on their, back, their background music, is hip-hop music. Like we mentioned in the beginning, Nike, Coca-Cola, Sprite, they all use the hip-hop beat to sell their products. And okay. so it's taking over. That's right. And uh, jumping now, this is going into the rock realm. I remember back in 1994, I believe it was, there was a video, a popular video that came out. I mean, it just broke a lot of standards. But it was a video about a young child uh, who was being teased at school. And uh, one day he walks into the classroom with a gun and he shoots himself in his classroom. And everybody thought, oh, this video is just wow, incredible. And everybody was ranting and raving about the video. And it was shortly after that, Atante, that school shootings began to become more and more uh, uh, constant. You know? And I don't think anyone has ever stopped to think, could it have been that this particular song with its lyrics about giving, you know, giving the idea of going into school and proving uh, that you are somebody by going in and taking a gun and doing uh, harm, is it possible that that could have been uh, played a part in the beginning of what we're now seeing as a string of school shootings? Oh, definitely. It's definitely connected. You know, in this article that I was reading, it's talking about how much money that the hip-hop industry is, is bringing in. And it says that today, hip and rap is the fastest growing music in the U.S., accounting for more than 10% of the $12.3 billion dollars that music sales did. That was in 1998. So I know now that it, it's even more. It takes me back to, you know, the love of money is the root of all evil. Mm -hmm. The entertainment industry is not interested or the music industry is not interested in saying, you know what, let's regulate this rap music. Let's, you know, let's, let's clean it up a little bit. Let's not allow so many curse words or, you know, don't talk about sex so much or, you know, the bad things that you're going to do to this person or that person. They don't care about that. They are going to allow our young people to hear and experience anything if it's going to bring in money. That's right. I have a quote here that I'd like to read. It's from the book Medical Ministry, page 111. And it says this, For thousands of years, Satan has been experimenting upon the properties of the human mind, and he has learned to know it well. By his subtle workings in these last days, he is linking the human mind with his own, imbuing it with his thoughts, and he is doing this work in so deceptive a manner that those who accept his guidance know not that they are being led by him at his will. The great deceiver hopes so to confuse the minds of men and women that none but his voice will be heard. Wow. Now that's amazing because what, what, what this is saying here is that 
we, uh, th the devil has a power to imbue his thoughts into our own minds, to connect our thoughts together, to make them as one. There's a word that um, most people will probably understand, but the word is syncopation. Mm. Syncopation. And uh, basically the word means to fuse together. Okay, and when we talk about syncopation, we're generally talking about what kind of music? Rock and hip hop. Because what happens is um, they take a rhythm and they basically cut off the beginning of one part of the rhythm, the end of, the, of one part of the rhythm, and they fuse it together, uh, making, an, um, making this, this fusion through, the, uh, through music. And so it's called syncopation. And, and I just wonder, Tante, could it be possible that through this style of music, which is uh, very effective in bringing about a spirit of rebellion, could it be that Satan himself is syncopating or fusing together his thoughts Hmm. with our own. Yes. I think it's very possible, and I think it is happening. As so many friends that I have who, who are in the hip-hop industry and who have been in the hip-hop industry have, have lived and have, have experienced that lifestyle of rebellion. I don't want anything to do with Jesus. You know, if I, if I come to Jesus, then he's going to take away all the fun that I'm having right now. And this is one of the greatest barriers that stop people from coming to God because that music says that you can do your own thing. You can live your own way. And this is the spirit of rebellion. You're right, Ivor. The music, hip-hop music, does produce the spirit of rebellion. But, you know, there might be some people out there who are thinking, you know, I want to give this up, but it's, it's too difficult. It seems to have control over me. I wanna, it reminds me of something that happened to me when I was a teenager, and I was listening to Prince. And... I don't remember where I heard it from, but, you know, I heard that really Prince's music was from the devil. And I thought, you know what, maybe I will stop listening to this music. So I threw the tape away. I can remember throwing it away in the garbage. And do you know that tape kept resurf resurfacing? And I know that my parents were not taking the tape out of the garbage can. I really believe demonic spirit spirits were taking the tape and trying to bring it back into my life. But I can testify that if you really want to give this music up and to allow God to help you to listen to music that's edifying to him, that will draw you closer to him. He can give you the power and he can overcome Satan's supernatural power that he tries to put upon us. That's right. You know, the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 6, it says, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God or atante in rebellion against God. Right. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So we're told here that we need to make a decision between which mind we want to live in, we want to dwell in. Because if we want to exercise the carnal mind, the Bible tells us we're going to die. The result of that is death. Not only death in the end, but death now. Because what we, what we, what we, are, what we have pleasure in in the carnal mind is, is nothing but death. It robs us of joy and happiness and peace. And God has come to give us joy and happiness and peace. The Bible says the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And really when you listen to this music, it's, it's robbing you of what is true peace and true joy and true happiness. That's what the music does. I can also remember, I can remember the last time I was at a club, a club where you, you dance and party and listen to hip hop music. And I remember being there and desiring and wanting happiness and peace, but feeling so empty while I was there. And I, and I know it was the Holy Spirit, but he, he just spoke to my, into my mind and just, I said, but I know it was God, because nothing good comes from me, but I know it was God. And I just said to myself, this is the last time that I'm ever going to come to this type of place. And I just remember walking down the street thinking, this is so empty. This is not really what I want. But it's only Jesus who can bring those things. The music does not. It brings emptiness and loneliness. Right. There was a British occultist by the name of Alistair Crowley who lived between the years 1875 and 1947. And uh, he was a rock icon. I mean, he wasn't a rock musician. He was a musician. He was a poet. He was a mystic. But a lot of rock artists hold him as an icon. And uh, he w probably one of the most profound statements he made, which is definitely not a true statement, but profound because it has an effect upon um, a lot of people, is, is this. He said, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. 
do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. And basically what he was saying was, whatever you want to do, whatever, however you want to live, that's the way that you should live. And when you think about the spirit of the 60s and, and uh, um, the, the hippie movement, and you think about uh, hip hop and uh, all these various types of music that encourage rebellion, that is basically the principle there. Do what you will shall be the whole of the law. And uh, this is, again, diametrically opposed to ca the character building that Jesus wants to take us through. God says, I want you to submit yourself to me. This law says, do what you will shall be the whole of the law. I remember when I was coming out of this industry and I asked the Lord, Lord, please, you need to give me the strength to break away from this. And it was a struggle. But you know what? God gave me the power and the strength to do it. And cutting that off made my journey out of the black hole much, much, much easier, much, much, much quicker. And I mean, I praise God for, for him giving me the power to do that. Praise God for that. And, you know, I know there's people out there thinking, well, what do we listen to then? You know, does, does God like music? Well, God does love music. I mean, music started in heaven. We right, know that. Right. Well, you know, we're going to talk about that more in our next program. Let me, let me just share this, this uh, final text of time. It's in Acts 19, verse uh, 19. And the Bible says there, uh, many also of them which used curious arts, talking about magical arts, these who did not believe in Christ, who came to believe in Christ, brought their books together and burned them before all men. Why did they do this? They wanted to make a public statement that they were giving their lives to Christ and they were getting rid of all the magic books. Well, we may not have magic books today, but we do have magic CDs. Right. You know, that music that is turning our, our hearts and our minds away from Christ. And we've been in many churches where we say, you know what, you need to, you need to, go, to go home, get those uh, avenues that the devil has into your home. Get those books and those movies and those videos and those uh, music CDs. Get them out and burn them. Have a bonfire. Get rid of them. The, you know, they're no better than the Ouija board. You know, get rid of them and start afresh with Jesus Christ. And he will come into your heart and he will do a miraculous thing for you. Because people who have not actually gotten rid of them and just kept them in their home right. eventually go back to they them. They eventually go right back. Just like that tape kept resurf resurfacing strangely, it's the same way that spirit of rebellion will continue to resurface if we don't cut it off. And the only way we can do that is through getting connected with Jesus Christ, through saying, Lord, I want to give my heart and my life to you. I want to get rid of this thing, and I want you to come in and empower me to do it. Now, on our next program, we will be talking about what type of music we should listen to. So you don't want to miss that program. Until next time, God bless.